It's no secret that China is a powerhouse in numerous technological and industrial domains. The future of the Chinese economy lies in innovation, and everybody knows it. The nation has made remarkable strides in industries like telecommunications, transportation, and artificial intelligence, consistently posing as a major competitor to the rest of the world. In the ongoing global pursuit of sustainable energy solutions, China has again found itself at the top as the world leader in making and buying electric vehicles. In 2022, it sold 6.8 million EVs domestically, the eighth consecutive year in which China was the world's largest market for EVs, accounting for over half of global EV sales. In comparison, the US only sold about 800,000 EVs in 2022. China has also become the principal manufacturer of lithium-ion batteries, which have emerged as a cornerstone technology in the energy sector. These batteries, known for their ability to store a significant amount of energy in a compact space, have revolutionized the way that we store and use energy. It's this quality of high energy density that has made them the preferred choice for a wide range of applications, from powering smartphones and laptops to EVs. EVs in particular have benefited enormously from advancements in lithium-ion battery technology. With the capacity for longer driving ranges and shorter charging times, EVs have become a viable alternative to traditional gasoline-powered vehicles, and automakers are surely aware of the fact. With the growing shift toward EVs and the need for lithium-ion batteries, China has secured its place as a dominant player in the EV battery market. Between manufacturing and managing much of the global supply chain, Bloomberg NEF estimates that by 2025, China's battery production capacity is predicted to be three times as much as the rest of the world combined. China's rise as a global leader has left other countries in a race to catch up. But how did China get here in the first place? Let's rewind to the oil crisis of the 1970s, where two specific events in the Middle East spurred disruptions of oil supplies from the region. It is an all-out war. That's how Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Dayan describes an invasion of the Golan Heights and the east bank of the Suez by Syria and Egypt. Then the ministers began what was to be an eight-hour meeting, resulting in their decision to reduce the flow of oil to America and other nations supporting Israel. The cutback will be 5% for the first month and an additional 5% for each passing month until Israeli forces leave occupied Arab land. Without cheap oil exports, countries like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the US, Japan, and much of Western Europe were unable to fuel their globalized industries. It was at this time that big fossil fuel companies heightened their efforts to find alternatives. Stanley Whittingham, a chemist at the U.S. oil giant Exxon, was able to invent the world's first rechargeable lithium-ion battery. But it wasn't perfect. The battery kept bursting into flames. And before Whittingham could fix the issue, it was the 1980s, the oil crisis had ended, cheap oil exports had returned, and Exxon, alongside other big fossil fuel companies, abandoned their interest in finding alternatives. But Whittingham's working prototype and other work on battery materials ignited wider interest in the field over the next decade. In 1992, Japan's Sony was able to convert the existing scientific ideas into the world's first commercial lithium-ion battery. It was an instant success. Sony sold 3 million units in 1993 and 15 million in 1994. Others were quick to jump on Sony's success, including Robin Zhang, now CEO of Contemporary Amprex Technology Limited, the world's largest battery company based out of, you guessed it, China. Back then, in 1999, Zhang had founded Amprex Technology Limited. By 2001, ATL had built itself a reputation as a reliable supplier of lithium-ion batteries. It had managed to produce batteries at half the cost of its Korean competitors. Their batteries were also thinner than other models and could be shaped according to the device, allowing for a wider range of use cases. Within three months of production, ATL was profitable. In 2001 as well, China joined the World Trade Organization, opening it up to significant foreign investment. ATL played a key role in helping China become a high-value producer of batteries overall. 
By 2005, it was acquired by Japanese electronics firm TDK. Zhang stayed on after the acquisition, and together with the disciplined work culture at TDK, ATL's lithium-ion battery business developed to supply batteries to the booming smartphone market, eventually supplying giants like Samsung and Apple. Interest in ATL's batteries for EVs began as early as 2006. The first sign of interest came from an Indian company called Riva, which at the time was developing an electric car powered by improved lead-acid batteries. It was looking at lithium-ion batteries as a silver bullet solution to increase its car's speed and range, in addition to enabling faster charging. Recognizing the potential for a mass shift toward EVs within the automotive industry, Zhang sought to develop a proactive long-term strategy. He created a multi-million dollar robust research department within ATL and started to acquire technology licenses from the U.S. that would allow them to build off existing research. Come 2008, on the cusp of the Beijing Olympics, the Chinese government was under pressure from the global media and its own citizens to fix its smoggy skies and lower its carbon footprint. In 2009, the government started handing out financial subsidies for EVs, the catch being that to be eligible, the battery had to be Chinese-made. On the flip side, the subsidies were not limited to domestic companies. With a head start from its research department and technology licenses, combined with the Chinese government's subsidy program, ATL helped set the stage for China's rise as the dominant powerhouse in the battery market. Then in 2011, Zhang created a spin-off company called Contemporary Amprex Technology Limited to specialize in the manufacturing of lithium-ion batteries for EVs. In 2017, Cadel officially took over Japan's Panasonic as the world's largest lithium-ion battery producer in terms of sales. It had managed to lower production costs relative to its Korean and Japanese rivals by increasing the scale of production, modeling the same approach that Zhang took with ATL when it halved Korea's battery production costs around 2001. With Cato's success, alongside the overall growing Chinese industry of EV battery production and the Chinese government's EV subsidy program, China soon became an indisputable global source of EV batteries. Cato specifically began supplying batteries to Chinese auto startups such as NIO and Xpeng, who started exporting cars to Europe. MG, the British car company owned by China's state-owned carmaker SAIC, started selling its ZS EV using Cadel batteries in the UK. Then, in a forward-thinking bid, Cadel bought stakes in a cobalt deposit in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, a lithium project in Australia, and a nickel project in Indonesia. Cobalt, lithium, and nickel all being essential ingredients of batteries. These are just among a larger list of initiatives that Zhang had incorporated to increase Cato's and in turn China's global dominance as the battery supplier for EVs. By 2022, Cato was supplying almost every EV producer in the world, including Tesla and Ford. As of August 2023, it held a 36.9% share of the lithium ion battery market. The Bloomberg Billionaires list placed Zhang as the 30th richest person in the world at a net worth of $34.3 billion. Of all the countries in the world, Germany probably had the largest pill to swallow. As the inventor of the four-stroke internal combustion engine in 1876 and home to notable car brands built on the idea of excellent engineering like BMW, Audi, and Mercedes-Benz, it faced the challenge of stepping up to the plate when EVs started growing in popularity. The pressure was on not only from a consumer demand standpoint, but also a government one. European Union climate change targets required car makers to reduce their carbon emissions starting in 2020 or face large fines. But the issue was that European car makers had no presence in the broader battery supply chain, arguably the most expensive part of an EV. Thus, it turned to China, who already had an established presence globally. Fritz Prinz, mechanical engineering professor at Stanford University, spoke specifically on Germany, stating that Germany had made a strategic error of neglecting the research and development of batteries. Perhaps it thought that batteries would only be needed for smartphones and other portables, which was a mistake. Cato had forged deals with BMW and Volkswagen, 
and in 2019 had broken ground in Onstad, Germany to build the country's first large-scale battery gigafactory, a $2 billion project with an estimated capacity of producing enough batteries for hundreds of thousands of EVs each year. China's ascension as the dominant powerhouse in the EV battery supply chain is an outcome of well-coordinated strategies at the right times, Cato being an exemplary case study. Pair that with favorable government policies and lower prices, and you get consistent consumer demand both domestically and internationally. With countries worldwide accelerating towards sustainable transportation with consumer EVs as their poster child, it remains to be seen whether China's pioneering efforts in battery production will continue to hold sway as other countries intensify efforts to compete. But for now, the future of EVs is in China.